All right, here we are, stay four, right, uh, of the challenge week breakdown. And this is the day when our hands are going to get the, as dirty as they ever were, because this is the day when we're going to talk about building and debugging. Most of you will probably or have probably already uh, experienced this situation. We are just running into bugs constantly and not knowing what to do, getting frustrated. And I feel like that not knowing how to approach bug fixing is the number one reason why most lovable projects fail or never see the uh, light of day. Uh, and I'm hopeful that I'm going to be able to assist you a little bit with fixing that by switching your mindset a little bit um, on this day four when we're going to talk about building and debugging. Um, so again, no matter how good of a setup your app will break, uh, I can guarantee that 100%. And there's you know, practically just three main ways that I found working uh, of fixing books. So number one way, the easy way, which is Lovable has um, a button that's a try to fix it button that's already in place in the app, which basically is just a prompt creator, creator for Lovable to acknowledge what the problem is and methodically approach its fixing. Um, then when that doesn't work, because sometimes global can get itself into a pretty crazy spiral, um, you can use your own voice, meaning your own prompt, uh, trying to explain lovable, hey, you know, you're not fixing the problem. Here's what I'm seeing. And I'm going to show you a prompt template that you can actually use that is a little bit more structured than just free form voice. Um, and then the last resort, but the resort that I would usually go to after maybe two or three tries where I can see that Lovable cannot figure it out, just using AI, right? Because what Lovable is powered by is Claude 3.7 Sonic, basically. So what you want to do is you want to go to that same or maybe a little bit even different. You can go to ChatGPT and have it actually fix the bug for you, right? When it comes to using your own voice, I want to say the main goal when when you are talk to Lovable is really challenge it from being overconfident and over-engineer solution, which will also have a pretty decent upside and benefit for you in saving you credits because Lovable is a credit-based builder. So every message you said, you're, you're wasting credits and a lot of the people watching this could be on a very limited credit plan. So you really need to be mindful of those types of things. Um, the approach of using AI to debug is a three-step approach, and I can demonstrate that for one of my previous projects. And let's just jump right into it, right? Because I, I think most people just want to understand how to um, actually fix stuff. So on a project that I was working on yesterday, for example, I was having a lot of issues, right? Um, so... Um, and as you can see, I was just getting an error like this, for example. When I, when I see that an error is, is like this, um, it, it's clear to me because of the way issues presented that it's a likely a, sort of a syntax error, meaning that there's, there's, there's a problem that's sort of minute that I feel confident, lovable, will be able to solve. And in those situations, I just click on this button here, try to fix it. And as you can see, that just creates uh, this prompt. That's all that it does, right? So, and then Lovable just writes the code to try and fix it. So in this particular case situation, it fixed this problem, but I was having a different problem then, right? My captcha didn't want to load, right? So at that point in time, I was very specific and asked it to extend my captcha from five seconds to one minute. So I use my tone of voice, right, uh, to do this. One of the things that I also do very often when I'm trying to use my own voice and my own prompts is I would accept suggestions such as these. If you can see it on my screen, Lovable will at times suggest refactoring certain files that could be quote unquote corrupted or having a problem. And in the past, I wouldn't do this, but Today, I am definitely doing it because that way I can narrow down the issue into a much, much smaller amount of code lines. And that is important because of the last step that I'm going to that I'm going to demonstrate to you, which is uh, fixing uh, bugs using uh, ChatGPT, right? Um, now, again, this is another free form, right? Prompt where I'm like... Uh, 
CAPTCHA loads, but once it's even try login, I'm running into this problem. Now you may be asking yourself, where, where did he get this problem from? And one of the ways that you can do that is by looking at your console log. So this is the project that I was working on, right? And all you gotta do is click, right click and click on inspect, right? This is what, this will switch your mode into like a, a, a mobile screen. And then from there, just switch to console. And as you can see in console, you will be able to see what's happening while you're trying to sort of log in, right? So in my case scenario, I got this thing to work eventually, but when it was breaking down, I would click on this type of stuff and I would be getting errors that would not allow me to continue, right? Um, so in, in those types of situations, you want to read your console log, you want to see what's broken, and you want to just take the issues as they get, you know, as they happen, and you want to just click control C and then control P, basically copy paste it into the lovable, lovable chat right here, right? Now, this is one of those situations where issues continue to repeat over and over and over again. And that's when I noticed, like in this particular instance, that Lovable does not necessarily know what it's doing. Because it's just, as you can see, I'm spinning in circles. I'm trying to do it differently. I'm trying different approaches. I'm pasting project documentation, approving the plan. I'm doing everything by the book. I'm refactoring. But I can just tell after a while Lovable is confused. And when that happens, I switch to the last bit, right? Before I do it, I will give you a prompt that's a little bit better structured. If you want to use Freeform, right? You want to use a prompt like this, and it will be included in my post, right? You want to describe the problem saying, here's a problem I'm facing. You've unsuccessfully attempted to fix it, paste the issue or explain the problem, and then Again, start challenging its way of working or thinking about the problem because it usually will admit its mistake and do a deeper analysis, right? And then, as I said, be even before you do it, you may want to refactor the files uh, uh, first so that the the kind of the, the surface of the problem starts to become a little bit smaller. Now, uh, I've set up a channel in the past on ChatGPT, right, where I would instruct uh, AI how to fix my problem. So it's kind of already trained on what it needs to do. So it's not going to be a one-to-one -one comparison, but, like, you can train your bot, I feel. You just got to go in and, like, talk to ChatGPT. And as you can see, I have a pretty deep chat history here for debugging. So it understands what it needs to do for me, right? So what you got to do is like maybe just say, hey, I'm going to use you to uh, send you problems and, you know, I'm using Glovable and it's a, a plain English prompting tool. Um, so the way I do, do it usually is like I identify the files that are potentially affected. So this was an authentication problem and a widget problem for CAPTCHA for verifying whether somebody's human or not. I would go to GitHub, right? And for instance, I'm on a different GitHub uh, 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 project right now, but like, let's say I had a problem with one of the functions in here or, or uh, something like that, or a page or a service, right? Um, I would just click AI service, for example, and then I would click download raw file button. You can download it as a file. You can download as many like these. They're very tiny. And then I would upload them into the chat and then just go and tell uh, ChatGPT the problem that I'm facing. Like this is the, this is the, what I'm trying to do. This is the error code that I'm getting. These are the documents that are related. So please read them. And then it's like, do you need other files? Do you know how to fix this? Why does your fix work? And then please write me a prompt and code for lovable so that I can instruct it to fix this thing. And basically what it does for you is it builds this prompt and even updates the 
code for the related file that it identified as being the one responsible for the issue. Now, even this isn't like a, a silver bullet thing. Like, as you can see, I, I, I had to do this a couple of times and go back and forth because even because ChatGPT doesn't have your app, doesn't have it, all of its code, right? This was a more complex issue to fix than what I would imagine it to be. So this is a perfect example where I'm just giving it a new set of issues constantly as they happen. I'm reading those issues again here in my console. I'm just copy pasting what I'm seeing back to chat GPT. And then it prompts, it builds me prompts for Lovable. And in the end, as you can see, all, all I was doing is I would say to Lovable exactly what it instructed me. And in uh, basically three attempts, I got a problem that I was able to fix. And now, uh, just for the sake of really doing this in real time, I'm going to switch over to a new project and I, where I left an error and we're going to try to fix it together. So on the, on the new project right here that we were working on throughout all of these days, as you can see, I was just following the, the plan. Like let's, let's backtrack for a second. Cause this is not just about debugging. I think this is where we stopped yesterday and it was like, okay, this is what was done. This is what was supposed to be done. And then I would just like continue with, you know, let's finish this phase. Then can we scan the code base so that we can refactor the files? One of the reasons why I like to refactor the files is because they're easier to manage later down the road if there are any code edits that need to be made. But as you can see, after I was done with refactoring, um, I was like, okay, let's finish this up, right? Let's break it down into steps. And we started working on it and bam, we just en encountered a bug, right? So in this situation, uh, what we can do is we can, let's, let's try and do this, right? I think what you want to start doing uh, early on before you just try to fix it with brute force, you can go to chat GPT and say, hey, I am getting this error. Please explain what this is. And what you want to do is you want to start, like, even though we're like supposed to leverage AI and let it build projects for us, you still want to know what it's doing. Like you want to have an understanding as to what exactly is happening. Right. Um, you know, so it's like, uh, this is what, what you can do as well. Right. This is very simple. Right. You can just, when AI is done, you just click copy and you can go to lovable and just paste it in here too. Like you don't have to do any huge thinking around this, but like sometimes it's good to read through these and understand exactly what's going on. Uh, this seems to be a rather technical problem, but sometimes, you know, there are issues that um, will be uh, a, a little bit different in nature that are irrelevant to your project and important for you to to fully grasp and understand to understand what you're building. Let's see if the bug gets fixed. Waiting for AI to finish though, I can definitely show you your base prompt if you want to train your own model, right? It will be in the comments as well. You just gotta basically copy paste this and just insert your error code. And from that point on, the chat will start working in your favor. Also, always say, I'm not an engineer. Please avoid tech jargon. Uh, and then the final, the very final note is when the bug gets fixed, this is the, the biggest game changer for me. You have to start asking Lovable, how could have it avoided it, this whole spiral and what needs to happen next time to avoid it uh, from ever happening again? Uh, and then let's go back to the chat. Let's see what happened. Oh, we got another error. Okay. So let's now click to try and fix it this way. This is a great example why sometimes try to fix it works better than the external thing because Lovable has a context window that AI does not. Um, and um, it will hopefully fix this issue. Seems to me that we're all in the clear. So tomorrow we cover the part that I think everybody uh, loves, which is designing, polishing, and getting everything ready for being published. So uh, now that our hands are being washed, 
Uh, I'll see you tomorrow in uh, one of the last videos in the session.